What's up, Mentorship Freaks? It's a daily dose of the Mentorship Motivator. I'm just getting ready for my workout, so I'm a little fired up, a little pumped up. Let's do this. Today, we're talking about the ugly side of sales, the ugly side of your sales process, of sales consultations, sales meetings, whatever the hell you want to call it, of your products or services, however it works in your industry. The ugly side of sales, you need to be like everything else. You need to be prepared for it. You need to expect it. It's all part of that that, that whole phase. There's phase, that phase, right? The five phases, the circle of domination or the circle of death, depending on how you look at it and how you handle it. There's those phases for everything, and this goes through sales too. You have to be expecting it and embrace it and be ready for it, ready to overcome it. So first thing with sales, you know that you need to have freaking thick skin. You need to toughen up. You need to have thick skin. You need to have your entrepreneurial armor freaking built up so you can handle these things that are going to happen because shit is going to go wrong. Shit's not going to go your way. It's not going to be a perfect world. There's going to be not many lay down sales. It just doesn't happen. And you just need to be resilient with thick skin, be an adult and a freaking professional, like a pro, an expert at sales and dealing with these things, these ugly side of sales. The first thing, the first, one of the first rules is don't take shit personal. It's nothing against you. Don't take it personal. Don't stress it, but expect it and plan for it. Be ready for it. So what is the ugly side of sales? You're making a call to a prospect or you're making a call to a, a, a client to confirm their appointment or they're making an appointment to confirm with you, and guess what? They don't return your phone call. It's gonna happen, and a lot of times, if it's a prospect, they're not returning your phone call because guess what? They lack the discipline and the structure, and that's why they need your product, your services to help them because that's something that's missing in their life. So of course, they've been avoiding it for so long, so it's up to you to not have thick skin and be persistent about that, be resilient, and just keep driving forward. They're not gonna return your call. Get used to it. People will not return your call. It's rude. Is it rude? Sure. Or maybe you didn't. you weren't compelling enough on the voice message you left or the impression that you made in the first place or you didn't do it quick enough. So, but they're not, we're talking about their, the ugly side. They're not going to return your call. They are going to pass you off to the gatekeeper. Someone, even if you get to the higher level person, they're just going to pass you off. Oh yeah, here. And they're going to send you off to the gatekeeper. It's going to happen. Be ready for it. Know how to deal with the gatekeeper, know how to get past the gatekeeper, or maybe an, an admin person is going to send you to the gatekeeper or the admin person, the front desk person is the gatekeeper. And you need to know how to get past that. They're going to, you're going to get stuck at the gatekeeper, get used to it, get ready to get past it. In your sales process with an actual like consultation or appointment or whatever, however your process works on the phone, in person, in groups, doesn't matter. People are going to fucking lie to you. They're going to lie to you that they're too busy to even talk. They're going to lie to you that they can't find any time to meet with you. They're going to lie to you about the reason why they're not buying. They're going to lie to you, lie to you saying they're moving. They're going to lie to you say they went to your competitor. It's all lies. They're going to say that their grandmother died. I've had prospects whose grandmother died like 17 times. Like how many fucking grandmothers do you actually have? It doesn't even make sense. But we just know it's part of the game. It's part of the sales process. And it's the ugly side of it. And we're ready for it. We deal with the ugly. We're built for this shit. That's why we're here in this group. That's why we're entrepreneurs. We are built for this ugly shit, right? We're not afraid of it. And then... They also not, when, when you, so let's say now you get them in that consultation. They're not going to tell you how they actually feel about your presentation or actually why they actually need your product or service. You're going to have to dig. You, they will not tell you their, how they feel. They will not share their emotions with you until first you build that rapport and you dig, 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 dig. Keep freaking digging. They're not going to tell you that your presentation sucks. They're just not going to tell you. They're going to let it suck and they're not going to buy from you. So you need to get feedback on it. See if it's making sense to them. See if there's anything you were unclear about or that you didn't spend enough time on or they need you to go back and revisit or whatever the case. And the ugly side, in person, they will be rude. They'll be distracted, unfocused. They'll be texting. They'll be looking around. They'll be biting their nails. They'll be eating. They'll be answering phone calls all while you're talking to them and trying to be serious to them. It's going to happen. No matter how good you are, these things are going to come about at some point. So you need to be prepared for it, ready for it. And when it comes time to them actually signing the, the dotted line, giving their credit card information, they will not tell you the real objection. They will lie about the objection. They'll lie about why they're not doing it. And you need to know that. And you need to know you need to, to figure out what is the real reason why they're not freaking buying. And... They, they won't do what they they won't do what they say. They say they're gonna call you back. They say they're gonna call you later tonight. They're gonna go talk to their husband and they're gonna or they're gonna they don't have their credit card with them. They're gonna call you later with it. They're not gonna do what they say. They're just not gonna do it. They're gonna say they're gonna call you to get payment later. It's up to you to follow through. It's up to you to break through to them. Not up to you. You're not just gonna rely on them because they're not gonna do it. It's one of the ugly sides of the sales. They will say I need to think about it. That's part of that. I've I've named this this thing. It's where 
It's AEDM, Automatic Excuse Defense Mechanism, that automatically they'll start defending themselves or they'll, they'll come up with automatic bullshit excuses that just come out automatic that don't mean anything. It could be completely off topic. Don't fall for it. Don't buy that shit. It's just the ugly side. Oh, I need to think about it. You know they don't need to think about it. It's something else. It's up to you to figure out what that something else is. They'll tell you, I love this one. They'll tell you that you're, they're on a budget, right? And, but you know what? They have no fucking clue what their budget is. They have no clue what their budget is. Ask them, well, yeah, what's your budget? Or how much over are you on your budget? Oh, well, I'd have to look at my finances. They don't have a fucking budget. They don't have a budget. I don't care. They don't have a budget. They're lying. They're lying. And if they do and they're over budget, guess what? They're over budget from spending, from people who convinced them that their product or service was valuable enough. So it's just an ugly side. They're going to use it as an excuse, as a scapegoat, goat, whatever, because they're going to make excuses. They're going to make excuses why they can't buy from you. And rather than just telling you what's missing from your product, your service, or your presentation, or maybe they don't like you, they'd rather just make excuses. The AEDM, Automatic Excuse Defense Mechanism, it's going to happen. They're going to say that it's too expensive, that they don't have the money, but they really have the money, you know, but, or, or they're going to say that it's too expensive and you know, they, they won't tell you that they really just don't have that money right for it. Tech, if it, depending on the case, usually they can find the money if they need to, but you know, but they won't tell you they still want the product. They won't say they need help figuring out how to pay for it, that they, they need to figure out how to come up with the money for it. They won't tell you that because that's like a, a hurt to their ego or their pride. So they'll throw out some budget or some other bullshit, or they'll just say, no, that's too expensive. I can't spend that much. Rather than saying, you know what? I really need your fucking product or service. Can you please help me how to figure it out? It's up to you to, t to tell them. You can help them figure out how to come up with it. And I guarantee you can. We'll, we'll cover that stuff in another, in like objections call or something. They're going to play games with you. They're going to waste your time. They're going to act like they're a buyer, like they're a lay down buyer. So you're going to be coasting through and not, and skip parts of your presentation thinking, oh, this is going to be so easy. But they're playing fucking games and then they're not a buyer. They seems like they're a lay down and they're bullshitting. They're... Or they're going to tell you they're shopping around or they saw it cheaper somewhere else. They're going to play games thinking it's going to give them a better deal or whatever else. It's up to you to show the value. It's up to you to show why you, you don't discount your services or your products. But it's up to you to also have options for them because they want it. People straight up, listen, people straight up disrespect you. I can't think of any off the top of my head with me, but I know I've been, I've, times I've been disrespected. I've had to think about it, but we've had some, some of our salespeople where someone just got up, got like yelled at them and just walked out. Said, I'm not, I'm not buying this. I'm not doing this. And they just walked out, grabbed their shit and just walked out. Never heard from them again. It's happened. It's happened. The ugly fucking side of sales. The other ugly side is they'll say they need to talk to someone else, even though we know they don't need to, but they might really truly believe they need to go talk to someone else to make this decision. Right. And they'll go talk to that someone else without you present, without your input. And they're not a salesperson. They can't tell the value. They're just, for us, they're just going to say, yeah, I'm going to the gym for $250 a month. And whoever they're talking to is going to be like, oh, no way. That's too expensive. There's gyms for $10 a month or $50 a month because they can't show, they're not trained to, to show the value, how it's worth 10 times more than the price it costs. So that's the ugly side. They're going to go talk to a decision maker without you there. So you need to make sure that you either have them bring the decision maker the very first time or set up another appointment, a joint meeting with the decision maker there in person because you need to get your hands on the decision maker if there is a decision maker in some companies we know there is if there's you know we're talking about corporate deals or something in our in our industry the whole spouse thing they need to talk to them it's always bullshit it's bullshit probably is for you too they will be late to your appointments they won't apologize they'll just come strolling in any time they won't value your, value your time and you need to be ready for that you need to be ready for someone to come in 15 minutes late 20 minutes late for a, a 45 or a 60 minute meeting and guess what? You better figure it out. You better adapt and overcome. Shh, you know, don't don't skip any parts of your process, but get through the ones that you think you don't need to to spend too much time on, and still get through it, and still close that fucking deal. That you need to do. The biggest, ugliest side of sales, the ugliest side, uglier than all that, is they will not fucking show up. They won't even tell you. We've had people confirm literally an hour before their appointment, and then no show, not answer the text after that. It's happened. So. These things happen to all of us. It's, it's, don't let it discourage you. Think of it. And, and if someone doesn't show up and then you have another appointment right after that, you can't be thinking, oh, this person's not going to show up. They're not going to be serious because then you're going to fucking blow that other sale too. You need to have a fresh start with the next consultation. Whatever happened before that, all these ugly things, thick entrepreneurial armor that can't break through to you. So it can't affect you going into your next sales appointment. 
Be ready for these this ugly side. Be prepared for it. Know how to deal with it. Practice this stuff. Train for this stuff. How are you going to deal with all these different situations? Make it happen. Go close some motherfucking deals. I will talk to you later. You are freaking awesome. No excuses.